What's up everybody, my name is Pai. Welcome to SR Lounge where we're here to help you be a better photographer and we have part three with Sue Bryce. She's in our studio, she has, honestly it's been our honor having you here, it's been amazing. Thanks. So thank you so much for spending the time here and uh, Sue has a wide body of work. She needs no introduction and she's been on Creative Live, 28 Days of Sue Bryce. She has her own, I know she's like blushing right now while I'm like saying all these things, it's kind of funny. It kind of makes me want to keep going. <laughs> She has her own educational website. Be sure to check out all of her work. We're gonna link everything up in the article and in the description below the video as well. And today, we're talking about marketing. Yeah. And in this episode specifically, well, in episode one, we talked about getting started, right? And it was an amazing story. If you guys haven't seen episode one, check it out. Episode two was overcoming your fear and charging. It was really just being valuing yourself, right? Valuing yourself and charging what you're worth and how to do that, get out of that mindship, which was amazing. Number three is kind of marketing and Which how it relates. Which is two. Yeah. Tied together. It is because it's it's and it's very different from other areas of photography for portraiture. I feel like so. Let's talk. How do you market? How do you get your name out when it comes to portraiture? So the first twelve years of my career, I worked in a portrait and wedding studio, mm -hmm. and the phone rang all day for weddings, mm -hmm. but not for portraits. And so what would happen was every day I would pick up the phone and our studio was called Headshots. Mm -hmm. And I would be like, Headshots, photography, Sue speaking. Yes, certainly, and what date are you getting married? Mm -hmm. Yes, that date is available right now. Our packages start at $2,000 and they go up from, and I would do the wedding pitch. Yeah. Um, but I just maybe answered the phone once a month for portraiture. Interesting. And it occurred to me that we charged two, we had an average sale at the time of, this is in the 90s, early 90s, mm -hmm. of $7,000 for portraits because we were one, uh, sorry, for weddings, because we were one of the top wedding studios in mm -hmm. the country. So we we did, you know, sort of the gamut of 2000 to 14000 but our yeah. average was seven. And then our average went up over the years to 9,000. Like he was definitely, my boss was one of the best wedding photographers. And we did a lot of weddings and we got paid well for them and we were known as a wedding and portrait studio. But the difference back then in the early 90s was weddings were calling us and we were calling people for portraits. Mm. And nothing's changed. Mm -hmm. So I get challenged a lot when I'm teaching as to why there's no SEO on my website. And I was like, what do I need SEO for? I don't shoot weddings. Yeah. Like you search for a wedding photographer, but you don't search for a portrait photographer. Mm -hmm. And everyone's like, that's not true. And I was like, well, I know this. 26 years of being a portrait photographer, I call my clients. It's not the other way around. So then the whole, well, who are you calling and what are you saying yeah. is huge. And here's the interesting thing. I've been coaching a lot of portrait, uh, wedding photographers that want to shoot portraits. And because, you know, you have a down season, you have mm -hmm. an off season. And also you have a whole week mm -hmm. during the week that you could be making Just money in portraits. In yeah. And they can't quite get the value money um, calling clients thing because it's not like weddings. You don't just put it out into a, you know, wedding magazine and fields inquiries on, are you available? Do I like you? And are you within my budget? Those yeah. are the three things wedding photographers have to really face. Yeah. Um, portrait photographers have to convince people of the importance of having a portrait taken mm -hmm. and then how much that costs. Now, all of the wedding photographers I'm coaching to do portraits charge an average of between four and $7,000 for weddings. Mm -hmm were telling me $1,200 was too much to charge as portrait photographers. And I was like, where did, where did the idea that you could spend four hours doing a portrait shoot, retouch it, spend an hour selling it, process it, get it framed and printed, was worth less than $1,200? Yeah. Uh, because you work the same time on a wedding, or it might be eight hours, and they're like, well, it just seemed to me that people would pay that for a wedding, but they wouldn't pay that for a portrait. Interesting. So the, the value set of a portrait photographer is significantly lower than that of a wedding photographer. Mm -hmm. And you all know as a wedding photographer, right, that when you start weddings, you start you do a free one, and then you're like, I could get 400 bucks for this, and you get 400 bucks, <laughs> and I could get 1,200 bucks, and you get 1,200 bucks, and then you suddenly book 40 weddings at 1,200 yeah. bucks, and you know it's not sustainable, because yeah. you're gonna die, yeah. and you're gonna be poor, because it's too much work. And then you get an assistant, and then you have to charge eighteen hundred to pay the assistant. You're still not making any profit. <laughs> no, absolutely. And so by then you're in your third year, and you put yourself up to three thousand. And who's going to pay that three thousand dollars? And 
you know, the evolution of the wedding photographer yeah. is really extraordinary. And yeah. it's the same. Yeet, and then suddenly I'll put my prices up to 7000 and then you drop down yeah. to like 10 weddings because then you're like, now I've got no work. I'll become a portrait photographer. <laughs> so you do, you come to me and you become a portrait photographer and then you're like, oh, it's not worth anything. And, I, and I'm not marketing to people. So I'm just watching this over the years. Or whatever. And the truth is, is at the end of the day, it's no different than being a wedding photographer. You just have to find the value of it. And I'll tell you what the core is. Creating a portrait for someone is showing them their true self. Mm -hmm. If you can, for me, find the balance of, I'm capturing you and the people you love, your wife, your children. One day, Pi, this portrait will be priceless. There is no money on the planet that will take your family back to this moment mm -hmm. where I can capture you and put that on paper forever. Mm -hmm. This is, I stopped time for your family and the generations of people that belong to your bloodline and it will forever be the most valuable thing that your family will own. Mm -hmm. And when you're not here, your children will look at this portrait and say, this was my father, mm -hmm. this was my grandfather, this was the legacy of who I am. That took me years, but I believe it now with every cell of my being. And your weddings are going to be half divorced in the next three years. <laughs> <laughs> so do I value myself as a portrait photographer? Hell yeah, I do. You know, you keep your wedding photography. I know exactly what I'm creating <laughs> over here. I need portrait photographers to understand that when they're marketing, to find the value of it, yeah. not chase the money of it. No, I can see it. And when you describe it, it makes so much sense. And I can see that you believe it. And I felt chills when you were describing like what I did. what it is, the process of, you know, documenting and immortalizing a moment and something that would, and as I think like on my own family, um, my, like what means that, like the, the things that mean them, and I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to try not to like get weird right now. Get weird. I, I call it getting weird <laughs> when I. It's getting weird. When I look at like my phone and I put like my, my daughter and my son, and we just did a little picture, like a little portrait session with them. And uh, it's like the most amazing thing. I look at, every time I look at my phone and if I were to think if my house were burning down, what would I get? I mean, it, it's cliche to think about that it's kind of stuff. Not. But then I would have to figure out a way to get all my hard drives. <laughs> If somebody dies, what's the first on my thing you drives. do? If you but, lose somebody, what's yeah, the first thing you, you do? You go back to the pictures. And That's when I'm missing thing. my children, I was in Sacramento shooting a wedding this last weekend. I had their faces set to my background. And I would just pull out my phone and turn on my, my, my just my background. My big, strong builder so, brother yeah. said to me when he had his baby daughter, sometimes I'll be on site. And he's got, like, staff. And he said, I'll pull my phone out and look at pictures of my daughter. Like, yeah. I look at them and I just think about how much I love her. Yeah. And my big burly brother told me that. And I was like, that is the power of what we do. No, that is yeah. exactly what it is. And I think if you don't grasp that, then you're going to have a hard time understanding the value of it. So maybe it, I don't know, maybe it takes something in your life to make you realize that. Like, maybe it's having children. Maybe it's losing somebody. Maybe it's documenting. Like going to a wedding and taking a photograph of a grandma who just passes away. If you've been in the industry long enough, you've had that happen to you. Of course. And the, the bride grim, and the groom, they call you and they, worse. yeah, and they call you and that's the most meaningful thing in the world. That is the value of what we're doing. Now, the, the question that I have is how do you get your name out to show people that value? How are you getting, how are you marketing and, and giving that message that you just gave me to your clients. Okay, so in the 80s, 90s and early 2000s, he who spoke the loudest got the most amount of attention. Mm -hmm. Doesn't work like that anymore. Now you can skip an ad on YouTube. Mm -hmm. You can skip an ad on Facebook. You can go down your feed and decide of all your friends who you want to unfollow. Mm -hmm. So you friend 500 people and then you unfollow 484 of them. So you're actually not their friend. It looks like you're their friend, <laughs> but you don't see anything that goes on in their feed unless you want to. Yeah. You can skip past any... We basically have become a nation or a world of ignoring marketing. Yeah. You can go to a trade show and then put your head down so that nobody gives you anything for free. Yeah. You can walk along the street and get a free pamphlet for a massage and toss it in the next 10 steps if you even took it in the first place. Mm -hmm. So, you know, let's look at what actually does work. And what works is people still buy storytelling and they still buy talking. 
we've stopped talking to people because we're online and we hide behind Facebook, put it out there as a post and think that people are reading it and mm -hmm. they're not. Mm -hmm. And what we've stopped doing is connecting anything we do. So I started shooting videos. I started telling story with video because they have an 84% more chance of watching it than reading my post. Mm. And my videos behind the scenes, I even teach people how to do it with Animoto. Like you don't even have to be good at it. There's systems out there that are cheap and easy that is making it idiot proof for mm -hmm. you to create visual product that has a message to it. Mm -hmm. So the hardest thing is really speaking with confidence and value in yourself. Mm. Anyone I speak to will book a photo shoot with me, but the idea of standing in front of a group of people actually paralyzed me for years. Now I'm good at it, but it took me a long time. Mm -hmm. You need to tell people what you do. You need to do either gift vouchers or events that put you in the public eye as a speaker to some degree. Mm -hmm. The highest form of revenue in your business is going to be word of mouth. So if I treat you well, if I give you an incredible experience, I price with value and I treat the relationship of you being my client as forever. Like if you and your wife came to me for portraits, I don't assume I'm never going to see you again and get embarrassed if I see you at the mall. Oh, there's those people that didn't pay me for their portraits. I'm going to assume that you and your wife are on my roller decks forever. Mm -hmm. And the only reason you would take me off it is if I did something in that relationship to cause you not to. I would also assume that I'm not only the best portrait photographer you've ever had, the one that looks after you financially and delivers the product on time with good service, you would recommend me to all of your friends and family. Mm -hmm. And that you would also come to pick up your portraits and buy me a bouquet of flowers and a bottle of champagne for the sheer thank you of working together. Mm -hmm. That comes down to service, that comes down to connection, storytelling. We're not fostering enough one-on-one. -on -one. We're getting too into what we're putting out there on social media and what we're not getting back. Mm -hmm. and then everybody else is doing it and then you look at all the people that you're following and they're all photographers they're mm -hmm. not your market yeah that's they're true. not your clients your clients are in every interaction they're in the other kids at school parents they're yeah. in you know and there's nothing wrong with looking at someone and saying you know pi i'd love to photograph you and your family mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong with saying that the worst thing you can say is oh no we already have a relationship with an amazing photographer her name is blah 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 and you've not said no to me you've not rejected me you've just you know not my client this week mm -hmm. but anything happens in that relationship and i'm yours you yeah. know what i mean yeah. when did we stop becoming the community photographer that is that this this is who i go to every year for my family portraits yeah I mean, I feel like we just went online and then blamed everybody else for being too many people online and just stopped offering that one-on-one. -on -one. You've got to talk, you've got to, you know, I don't care if I have to give away a sitting to get paid, I'll do it. That's not a problem for me. I'm not like, but I need my $90. Mm -hmm. You know, because that's how a lot of photographers act. They're tight-fisted and they just need to, but I need to be paid for my time. What if they don't buy anything? And I'm like, oh my God, what if they do? Mm -hmm. What if they buy $3,000 worth and then come back every year for the next eight years and give you to all of their friends? That is business. You know what's funny? Uh, you are the first person educating that I've heard that has mentioned whatever happened to the person coming back to that one photographer over and over and over and over. So this is business, because, right? Well, yeah, and because in the industry, all that goes around right now is getting the one sale. Like that's all anybody thinks about is shooting the one, shooting the one gig, getting the one. And you know, qualifying that client, qualify, schmollify, yeah. service. You know, I look at photographers all the time, and you know, I like bunnies and mai tais and walks along the beach and sunsets. Who cares? Mm -hmm. I take really beautiful photographs and I'm going to take the best photograph you've ever seen of yourself. I'm telling you what you're getting. I'm not telling you about me. You don't need to know about me. I do like bunnies and my ties and, <laughs> and sunsets, you know? That's cool, but you can find that out later after you've become a client for a while. Those are personal things. I don't need to share them. Bunnies you know, are kind of mean though. I held they bunnies. Bite. They, they bite and, and they not, kick. They're really not hard. loving. No. No, not good pets. <laughs> Okay, but the truth is, is at the end of the day, the service is ultimately everything. What makes you go back over and over again somewhere? The bloody good service you got. Mm. When did we stop doing that? Well, you're the second photographer that has said um, service. And here's what the interesting thing is. Uh, do you know John Solano, Brian Marcus? No. Okay. I would say that those two are probably like our mentors in, as far as what we've done here in the studio in, in wedding photography. And uh, I had John in here a while back and he said... Um, He's, I said, what, what do you consider is your style or your product? What is that? 
and you know you expect something like oh you know I shoot like a very like you know vivid imagery and I do this and I he just said my experience he said when my clients come to me my style John Solano what I do is the experience and people talk about it people you know rave about it but that's the whole thing that is my product I don't care what kind of images like the, people will forget about the images they'll forget about they'll forget about um, how much colors in an image or how much you know whatever it is black and white they're all they're gonna remember is two things number one like who's in the photo and it's, it's a good expression number two how they felt when you took it yeah and uh, you're the second photographer and the interesting thing is I probably classify both of you as top 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 tier photographers in your respective industries that have said the same thing so the first thing I'd say to you if I was gonna photograph you is how do you want to be photographed in the uh, nude well no no that's <laughs> I'm the just most kidding. That's not thing. that's not how I want to be photographed not a problem the, the Did I just say that to Sue Bryce? <laughs> I just said that to Sue Bryce. No, I, that's the first thing I say. How do you want to be photographed? And what, what do they typically respond when they say that? Most people just stop and go, oh, whatever you think. I was like, no, that's yeah. not an answer. Whatever you think is not an answer. So when you look at my website, what images do you love? And they'll go, oh, you know the ones where it's like almost monochromatic and all the backlight and, mm -hmm. or, you know, they're, they don't, they're not photographers so they don't know all the right words, but they're like the white ones and the simple ones and the ones that look like they're not posed but they're posed. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they say, I get a really strong idea of what you're drawn to by what you like in my work. So who do you want to be photographed with is my second question. Because get this, if you said to me, I'm a triplet, and we all have married with three kids, I would invite your two brothers, all of their wives, and all nine children in because I just quadrupled my sale. Mm -hmm. So in doing that, I'm giving you what you want, and then I'm making more business. And then I say, how do you want to be photographed? Who do you want to be photographed with? What do you love about my work? So that you don't bring in a picture of you know, Brad Pitt and go, I want to look like this. And I go, well, the only way you're going to look like that pipe is if I stick it to your forehead. <laughs> <laughs> but no, the truth is, is people Aww. better. No, I'm kidding. Um, but the truth is, is I want the truth of how you, like what, what attracted you to my brand and how am I going to give that yeah. to you because that's the most important part. And I, I ask all questions based on you, not on you liking my work. If I fail in a sale, I have failed to either educate my client on the prices so they were afraid of the prices. Mm -hmm. I failed to deliver the product that I said I could deliver or that they thought I could deliver or I failed to connect with them in a way that they thought I offered the first two things and delivered both mm -hmm. of those things. None of those things have anything to do with you as a client and everything to do with where I failed. Mm -hmm. Now that comes down to education, service, and service, mm -hmm. which is service, service, service. <laughs> and then the follow through of honoring the fact that you spent money with me, I created your family portraits, your family have now imprinted on my world and you will forever be part of my rolling index until mm -hmm. you tell me to get off it. I will offer you that service every year, year in, year out, because my goal in my heart, my intention is this. If I could take a photograph of your beautiful family every year to watch your children turn into teenagers and adults, watch you and your wife grow and evolve and watch your family grow and mature and evolve, then I have created a legacy that is beyond any gift anybody could have ever given you mm. and I have the honor of being chosen to be your family photographer. When you describe it, it sounds like the best marketing I've ever heard. Like it's, it's so simple but it's so incredibly effective and it'll be any other marketing message yeah. that's out there. So yeah. that's it. It's the truth. That's it. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's amazing to see what you've done with that because I think while it's a very simple, it's a very simple bit of advice, I think pulling it off and being genuine with it like you are, you have to have a passion for it and you have to be the kind of person that you are. You have to be a good you person. You have to feel it. But okay, everybody has a different passion. I mm -hmm. have a friend that has a million dollar studio turnover. Mm -hmm. His average sale is $1,200 and he photographs family portraits and 10 weddings a year. Okay, million dollars. He has two star, million dollar turnover, 10 weddings a year, family portraits, 1200 Do the math on how mm -hmm. much he's working. His passion is getting the sale. Mm -hmm. Like he loves numbers, he loves money and he delivers a great service. He's open and connected but his passion is the constantly looking for the numbers yeah. and getting the numbers. We all have a different value and drive. Sure. You don't have to adopt mine, you have to find yours. Yeah. You find your voice, find your value voice, 
find your fear, work on those three areas, tell me what it is that you truly want and get up and run towards it every day. But if you sit telling me what you don't have, you're not seeing what you can have and you're spending 90% of your energy on what you don't have and 10% on your energy doing nothing instead of 100% of your energy running after what it is that you love the most and that is really going to change your world. That's an amazing message, and uh, I really appreciate your time coming out here. So, once again, I would say if you haven't seen the other two episodes, be sure to check both of them out. All three of these episodes have been incredibly in enlightening to myself, as well as I'm sure for the audience. So, for those that want to learn more, check out Sue Bryce's work. We're going to link not only to her website and her work, but also her educational site and also the work that she's done with Creative Live. She has a whole host of awesome stuff out there, so we want you to check it all out. We'll see you all in the next video. The first year in my garage, we did $480,000 in turnover on portraits. That's amazing. The second year, we did over $650,000, I think $620,000. And then our third year, we did nine hundred and seventy. dollars We nearly did a million in turnover in our third year.